Hey people, it's a few days after Christmas, I mean New Year's, <laughs> and I'm, I want to get this turtle finished. I'm excited because I got my new LED light today and uh, see, and which uh, you'll be able to see a lot clearer now. But especially me. <laughs> so I'm doing the dot work at the moment. As you can see, it's looking uh, pretty cool. I'm doing the lines. I'm doing the lines and the dot work to create movement in the water. Because I didn't want to just do a turtle, I wanted to do a turtle that you can experience in the water within its movement. So when it's finished, you'll see that you'll be connected to the animal in a way that you are one with it and its element in the water. So that is the feeling I'm trying to portray in this painting and a feeling I try to portray in many of my paintings, especially in the last one uh, of the kangaroo that I did uh, of it hopping. I was trying to create the movement of its hop. So now uh, let's get this uh, done because I want today. I want to, um, as you can see, I've mapped out the the circles on the left hand side of it. Well, I want to do the, the dots in these circles, like on the other side. That's what I want to do in this video, okay? Yes, Galia brush, we all know that. If you've been following my videos, you should know by now anyway. Here's my favourite brush. So, and with the colours, um, I've done brighter in its belly. Um, so that you can uh, see where all the movement's coming out from this central point through the water and the other circles with dots which come out of the middle of its body through its legs and neck. So this turtle is called a snake head turtle because it has a really long neck on it and its head looks like the head of a snake. Um, it's common to where I live in New South Wales and you often see them crossing the road to go to its next uh, creek for food. Uh, unfortunately a lot of them get run over on the road but a lot of them do get saved which is good so this is the snakehead turtle common to uh, parts of New South Wales and Queensland so yeah they live in uh, swamps and creeks um, so let's get this party started. So down goes the light.
and I'm listening to Head Candy Disc 2. Head Cam Candy Miami 2003. You know, lead lights are really good to use because they don't strain the eyes. Especially when you're doing up close work like this. I am at the moment really in love with animals, aquatic animals. I just came back from Lightning Ridge. I was trying to spot some koalas, but with no luck because it's not their breeding season at the moment. Did you know that they eat uh, half a kilo of eucalyptus leaves a day? They don't need to drink either. But back to the turtle. Some, um, some animals are easy to capture than others in a painting because of their movement. But other animals such as the koala, which was um, done two paintings back, doesn't have that much of a movement because they spend most of their time in the tree. Whereas the kangaroo and the turtle have a movement that's very distinct. Let's almost finish that for my time. the dog again, my alarm bell. This is the first sketch that I did of, one of the first sketches I did of the, uh, you can't see it now because of the light, um, what I did of the turtle and with the colours I put there in the box.
So I hope everyone had a wonderful Easter. Easter. Why? I'm still on holiday mode. Although I haven't gone on a proper holiday just yet. Not till I finish a couple more paintings and then I'm off to India. But I hope everyone had a great Christmas and New Year. I most certainly did. everything I'm doing so much better Check out my Facebook page. Artworks by Miri, M I double R double E, for some funky photos of what I've been up to in my image. Lightning Ridge is a Outback town in Australia. I got taught from an Aboriginal artist when I lived in Canberra. Well, I didn't, when I was travelling to Canberra back in 2009, an uh, Aboriginal artist named James Bowen taught me, told me about how a lot of Aboriginal artists use a skewer. The skewer is this, a, a long stick that they use in cooking to put, to make kebab sticks. Uh, well, the end on this is a lot of them use that to create their dot work, but it doesn't create much, um, well, as uh, some. As John Murray put it, it doesn't create much personality. Anyway, but it was 2009 that uh, James taught me, gave me the idea about using paintbrush for dark work. So, all my dark work is created with a brush. And the beauty about that is you can change the size, you can make it a really large dot, or you can make a really small one. So, which is pretty cool. And so when you're running out on the edge, you can make it very small to fit in nicely.
so I've created this picture with a lot of cool blue colours but I've also created it with a lot of warm ready earthy colours so um, we've got that nice combination of them both in this picture because um, to create the feeling and depth of the sea of the water sorry. because these turtles live in swamps and lakes and rivers not the sea so a lot of people from outside Australia wouldn't know about these turtles like a local turtle here in Australia so I wanted to capture a different kind of turtle instead of the usual ones that you see about the place especially with its unique snake like head so we just finished the second one you see as we create more it brings more life to the painting Everyone's done their New Year's wish list. Because this year's going to be fantastic. And I'm already working on some fantastic ideas for the New Year head. can see me about that's the plan not just here in Australia but so people will across the globe and see what I'm up to but you know it's very exciting what this year will be I get bored. So I like to create, use my imagination to create excitement and new paintings that I can bring to life. It fills me up with a lot of excitement and joy. Do the whale next. I told you I'm really in love with the aquatic animals right now. Having the element of water in there really allows us to delve deeper into our emotions to uncover some really beautiful things I think it's always healthy to challenge ourselves
This color is pretty awesome color. It's called Australian Sap Green. Australian Yellow Green, sorry. Which is which has a lot of yellow in it. And this color, although it looks black in the future, which I'll show you in a minute, is actually purple series 1 in the material I think. Believe that or not, it looks more like a burnt umber on this burgundy background. Now the burgundy background to this Animal Dreaming series represents the red dirt within Australia. So that's why the background of these Animal Dreaming paintings are always painted in the base coat of burgundy to represent the rich red soil of Australia. And especially in my country where I come from, in Dubbo, um, represents Red Earth in Aboriginal language. So just so I can show you. Just round the green is here, purple. See how it looks really dark. So we've got these three happening. the movement I'm creating here, people. Back to the yellow again. Then cobalt turquoise. And then cobalt turquoise light hue. Which is much lighter turquoise. Australian yellow green. A lot of people say that uh, they're very surprised that when they look at some of my paintings that the colours that I've chosen, they're very surprised that they go together. Some 
using it, I'm even surprised when I get them out until I stop using them. So it's not something that is overly planned, like the design is in my sketches. The colors come quite naturally to me. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just loving this color right now. The Australian yellow green. I mean, look at it. Just look at that. Hang on. Oops. <laughs> so now the purple. Back to the purple. Okay, um, I've got like another three to go. But this um, painting is going to be transferred onto a later painting to become then the 11th painting of the 44 altogether. So it will be number 11. The last one I did previously was the koala and the one later. So then the turtle, then the whale. Voice light hue in the interior. Thank you. 
by the way, for any of you guys that don't know about the meaning of Mary. Mary means dingo in the Kuma language, where my family originated from in Australia. It means dingo, which is a wild Australian dog. It is my totem that I was given to by someone in my family, an important person in my family. And I take it everywhere I go, it means trusting my instincts on my journey and everywhere that I go, and listening to that and everything that I do, especially to do with my art. And for people and what it represents to them, it represents the beginning of my spiritual journey, allowing myself to be awoken by your journey and understanding yourself a lot more. And the things that bring you happiness and the things that give meaning to you is what the dingo represents. I was given my name about eight or nine years ago and started to use it early last year in all my papers to honour that part of myself. So that's what my name means. I honour the animals and everything that I do. And always connect to them in a way that can bring the viewer, you guys, the experience that I was given upon capturing capture them in their natural habitat. I will be going to India soon to try and capture the Black Panther. I've been to many places in Australia and travelled Australia for four or five years and I've seen many animals. So I decided to make a series of one metre paintings, 44 to be exact. Because one day I want to make a card deck for everyone to buy the entire 44 series in a card deck. So as you know, doing these paintings takes time. retail around 30 to 40 dollars. So after I do the total it'll be number 11. 10, 11. So that'll be very exciting. Come on, let's do this. What are you waiting for? Let's go, baby. Let's see if I can show. 
Okay. You know, oh no, I just came back from Miami and the start of December and showed my how from the Animal Dreaming series. So for those that haven't seen the how, I will show you very soon. been getting around and surprised and in October it was projected 40 stories high in New York and then again in Miami show so I don't like to paint um, my cat. My canvas is on an easel. I like to do it this way. So I don't paint them like this on the easel because I feel like I'm painting upside down. So I paint this way. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
so smudge some of that one if that's okay, I can fix it up. Back to the old Australian one again. Smash the other one, that's the finish of the second one. See? Uh, next step is to put some lines in now. But I will do that in another video. Or I'll do most of it and then do a little bit more to show you. For now, I'll just show you my L that I was telling you about. So this has about 18 to 20 colors. I use this as a representation of the cherry tree. And because this one is called I Paint It Out, this, this one is actually called Day Out, so I painted that with sun. You don't know really where see in the sun. And with all the colours in the background, I can learn from the sun, where the cherry tree flowers, and the other is going on the way down to the bottom. So you can see what clothes I've put in the colour. Okay, bring it in. So this was the painting that was projected on the skyscraper in New York last in October and then sharing at the Miami Art Scrape Show on Miami Beach in the last month.
so again, this is what we've done so far. Stay tuned for some more videos by Marie. Um, visit me on my Facebook page and follow all my work at Artworks by Marie. Or visit my website at dreamsofcreation.com And hope to see you all guys again soon. So stay tuned for some more exciting videos. Bye for now.